Greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to this Friday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we reflect on verses from God's Word. And this morning we are look, we're still in Luke and we're looking at Luke chapter 1 verses 41 to 46 uh, reading from the English Standard Version. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your word, which encourages us, which shines a light on our path, which helps us to understand what it means to be in an intimate relationship with you. And so, God, as we come into your holy presence this day, as we hit the pause button for a few moments to just reflect on your word and to listen for your still small voice speaking to us, Lord, we pray that you would quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ. In whose precious name we pray. Amen. So reading from Luke chapter uh, 1, verses 41 to 46. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb left, leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. This is such a precious part of the Christmas story. This scene where Mary comes to visit her kindred, Elizabeth and Zechariah, and she is going to help Elizabeth as she is in the last uh, days of her um, pregnancy and is about to give birth to John, who would prepare the way for Jesus. And so as, as Mary comes into Zechariah and Elizabeth's home and greets Elizabeth, we're told that at the sound of, of her greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. And that must have been an incredibly startling uh, experience for Elizabeth. But it's the work of God that is so incredible in this story. Because we're told that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So, as we looked at yesterday in, in Zechariah's prophecy, the notion of being filled with the Holy Spirit was a relatively new concept for the people of you know, biblical antiquity. It was, Holy Spirit was kind of this, this entity that was present, but, but not really knowable, not really touchable, not really experienceable. Holy Spirit was there, but not really there, if you know what I mean. But in the New Testament, in the, in the story of God coming in close after 400 years of silence, he's coming into the lives of his people in a new and profound way, in a life-changing way. And so not only does, does Elizabeth experience this, this must have been incredibly strange and uncomfortable feeling of, of having her baby within her leap for joy within her womb, but she's filled with Holy Spirit. And she, and she proclaims with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. She would only have known that because of 
Holy Spirit in her that she's just received. But John, the unborn John, recognized the unborn Savior of the world, the unborn Messiah in Mary's womb. And he leapt for joy. It is for this reason, Jesus, that John came to prepare the way for Messiah. And he leapt for joy. Now, some would say, that's a bit of a stretch to, to pastor to suggest that the unborn baby would know enough about what was to happen that he would recognize that and leap for joy. Well, maybe. But with God, all things are possible. We're told that. Mary told that just a few verses earlier. So is it not possible that God could have placed within John's heart and mind and soul, even within the womb, the purpose that he's been given? It's not a stretch. Because we've seen, we call them child prodigies, is the, the, the phrase that we use for people. But we see people, children who are born, and from very early on in their life, they demonstrate a God-given gift that is, is beyond imagination. Beyond explanation other than it is a gift from God. You can think of Amadeus Mozart. Incredibly gifted musician from a very, very young age. Child. And there are others. Many others throughout history who have come forth from their mother's womb with a special gift that is beyond explanation other than it's a gift from God. So it's actually not that big a stretch to suggest that John knew even before he was born what his purpose was, what God's plan was for his life. And when he, when he experienced Mary coming into the room, but more particularly when he experienced the unborn Savior of the world coming into the room, cradled within Mary's womb, he knew that he was in the presence of the holiness of God. He knew that he was in the presence of Messiah. And his response was to leap for joy. And Holy Spirit has now embodied Elizabeth and gives her the wisdom to know that, in fact, Mary is blessed. And so is the fruit of her womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. Where, is, where would she have gotten this, this idea that, that Mary is the mother of her Lord? Other than the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that now abides in her. For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Oh, what joy there is to be in the presence of our Lord. What joy fills the believer's heart when Christ takes up residence in our hearts and lives. 
We leap for joy with exuberant joy, ecstatic joy. Our lives are transformed by experiencing the living Christ and having him take up residence in our hearts and lives. And blessed is she who believed, who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. So in this story, we're seeing a, a mighty work of Holy Spirit in this few seconds, in this, this brief moment as Mary enters Elizabeth's home. Holy Spirit is filling her with knowledge, with wisdom. Because Elizabeth doesn't know what was spoken to Mary. Elizabeth doesn't know that Mary is carrying the Son of God. Elizabeth doesn't know that Holy Spirit came upon Mary and conceived the very Son of God within her womb. Elizabeth doesn't know and yet she must have wondered. I know Mary's betrothed to Joseph, but we didn't get the wedding invitation. So how is it that she's now pregnant? Holy Spirit gives her the wisdom. Holy Spirit informs her of what the Lord had spoken to Mary. Indeed, what has transpired? Because otherwise, her first response would have been like so many of, other, of the other people that heard that Mary was pregnant. It's like, oh, <laughs> had a little bit of hanky-panky going on before the wedding day, and now you're pregnant. Way to go, Mary. But no. No. Elizabeth greets her as the mother of her Lord and proclaims that how, how blessed she is that she, of all people, will be the one whom Mary comes to visit and that the Lord would come to visit her. And even the unborn child in her womb leapt for joy. This is such a beautiful story, friends, of how God works even despite us, even in spite of all of our frailties and our brokenness and our flaws and our trying to, trying to make sense of all of this stuff, even in all of the midst of the mess of life, God steps in and does these miraculous works. The very moment... Mary enters the house. Elizabeth is filled with the wisdom of Holy Spirit. And she gets it. She knows in her heart what God has done in the life of this young woman. And she is blessed because of it. Woman in old age, who was well beyond childbearing years, faithfully served the Lord all her life, is now about to give birth to her one and only son, John, is now blessed by being in the presence of the yet-born Messiah. It took a long time for God to answer those prayers. But now God is pouring out blessing upon blessing on this faithful woman, Elizabeth. And he's using an unlikely character in Mary to be a blessing to her. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. Just blessing. And it's all the work of Holy Spirit. And so, friends, this gives us hope. It gives us encouragement because if God 
did this for Elizabeth and Mary. He can do it for you and for me too, friends. If we will be open and receptive to his move in our lives. Open and receptive to hearing him. Open and receptive to the Holy Spirit taking up residence in our hearts and lives. He will bless us too. And so friends, I hope you're encouraged by this, this story, this encounter with God. And I hope that you will seek him with your whole heart this day, knowing that he is just waiting to bless you in ways unimaginable if you will seek him with your whole heart. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, the story of your entering into the lives of your people in profound ways. We thank you for the faithfulness of Mary and Elizabeth and Zechariah and Joseph. And we thank you, Lord, for your promises kept. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you enter into our hearts in surprising ways and reveal untold mysteries to us that we may understand more clearly, more fully, the will of the Father and the purpose that he has placed within each one of our hearts. And so, God, we pray that you will continue to make your face shine before us, that you'll continue to guide us this day, that you'll direct our steps, and you'll grant us wisdom and favor, that we may speak of your love and your grace with, with joy and thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. As we are at the end of another week, I just want to um, encourage you to gather for worship if you are able to in your local church. And if not, we invite you to join us on this YouTube channel for our Sunday morning worship service as we continue our journey towards Bethlehem during this season of Advent. Um, I also want to encourage you that... Um, um, this Sunday is our live nativity, and uh, that's going from 12.30 to 4.30. And so we uh, invite you to join us here um, outside at the church for our yearly offering to the community of the Christmas Story live. There'll be refreshments, there'll be um, interaction with, with, uh, with people, and and also uh, to hear the story, and also we will have live animals for, for the children to, to pet and so on. And so that's open to the community. We invite you to come and join us for that. Um, I also want to remind those of you who are coming on Sunday for, for church um, that we're continuing the, the theme of having fun at church. I know that's a radical theme, but uh, we are having fun. And so we're inviting people to wear their favorite Christmas sweater on Sunday for church. Uh, it can be an ugly Christmas sweater. It can be a beautiful Christmas sweater. It could be a sweater like this. Um, your choice. But we're encouraging everyone to wear their favorite Christmas sweater for church on Sunday and uh, just have a little bit of fun as we uh, continue on our journey. And so, friends, I hope that you have a blessed uh, weekend. Be kind to one another, stay safe, um, love generously, because Christ loved us and forgave us and saved us. It is the reason why we celebrate his birth at this time of year, because it is God's gift of love for all humanity. And we are called as Christians, as followers of Christ, to show forth that love in the words we speak and the things we do. So I encourage you, friends. Have a blessed weekend, and we look forward to seeing you next week as we unpack more verses from God's Word. So friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And all God's people said together, Amen. See you next week, friends.